AI agents are failing and they'll keep failing until we fix this one thing. Everyone's always talking about large language models, ChatGPT, Claude Gemini, the jumbo jets of AI, overkill for most of the jobs we're asking them to do. But what we actually need is something smaller, not a jumbo jet, but a drone, a small language model. Most people haven't ever heard of them, but they're the reason AI in the real world will either succeed or collapse. And by the end of this episode, you'll know exactly what they are, why they matter, and why some of the smartest people in AI believe they could be even more important than the giants that we're all obsessed with. Spoiler, we can't make good AI agentic workflows without them. You do not need to be technical or a developer to understand this. You just have to be a human being who's curious about all this crazy AI hype. And before we get started, please hit that subscribe button and ask questions as we go through this together. I really want to hear from you. So what exactly is an SLM? If a large language model is a jumbo jet, massive and packed with every gadget imaginable, then a small language model is more like a drone. It still flies, it's still powerful, but it's lighter, faster, and built for very specific missions. Under the hood, they're exactly the same. Small models use the same transformer architecture that powers systems like GPT or Gemini. So it's the same brain design, just tinier. The real difference comes down to something called parameters. You can think of parameters as the settings on the brain's control board, the little weights, the levers, and the switches the AI adjusts while it learns. They're what shape how the models recognizes patterns and help them generate answers. The jumbo jets, LLMs, ChatGPT, Gemini, they have control boards with hundreds of billions, even trillions of switches lit up. A small model might only have a million, maybe a couple billion, Still a huge control board, but nowhere near the size of the giants. What do you think? Do you guys think most people even need a jumbo jet model like ChatGPT for everyday stuff? Or maybe a drone size model actually would be enough. Now, a common misconception is the parameters directly reflect how much data a model was trained on. People hear billions of parameters and think it means the model has billions of facts memorized, but that's not actually how it works. Think of it this way. The data is the textbook, the parameters are the brain's control board. The more switches you have, the more nuance you can remember from the textbook. But a smaller model trained on the same amount of data doesn't just throw huge chunks of the book away, it distills it and compresses all of that information into fewer, sharper settings. So they don't waste space trying to cover every random fact in the world. Instead, they're tuned to hold on to the patterns that matter for a specific job and that's exactly where they shine. Now, why would we even want a smaller brain? Isn't bigger always better? Well, not really. The real strength of a small model is specialization. A large model is like a Swiss army knife. It can do a little bit of everything, but it isn't the best at one thing. A small model is more like a scalpel. It's trained on one specific job and it will outperform the giants almost every single time, whether that's reviewing legal documents, solving math problems, or running a customer service chatbot, the scalpel usually wins. If LLMs are the general medicine doctors, SLMs are the brain surgeons. Now, would you rather have one giant AI that can do everything kind of well or a team of smaller AIs, each an expert at their own job? Let me know in the comments. SLMs have another huge advantage, privacy. Hospitals, banks, governments, even the most cautious data privacy nerds don't want sensitive information constantly flowing back and forth to someone's random company cloud. Small models solve that problem. They can run directly on site, tucked safely into a private system, which means no data ever needs to leave the building. That ability to run locally also makes them fast. Without billions of parameters slowing things down, small models can deliver answers in real time. They don't need racks of GPUs humming away in a data center. They can run on a laptop, a phone, sometimes even offline. And for anyone that depends on quick responses, that kind of speed is a game changer. And because they're lighter, they're cheaper and better for the environment too. They use less energy, they cost less to deploy, and their impact on the environment is dramatically smaller. That matters as AI moves from research labs into everyday life, where efficiency is no longer optional, it's essential. 
Put all of that together and the picture becomes really clear. If AI is going to live everywhere, in our cars, schools, even in our refrigerators, then it can't always be the jumbo jet. It has to be the drone. Now, if you want to keep up with the future of AI, knowing how to connect with the right people matters just as much as knowing the tech. Mentors to learn from, sales, outreach, recruitment, looking for VCs, or even teammates to build with. But Anyone who's tried knows how much time you lose scrolling LinkedIn or chasing introductions. That's why I'm so excited today's sponsor is a tool that I've been testing called Lessie AI. Think of it like Google search on steroids, but built for people. You type a prompt, say, find me a senior AI engineer with FinTech and YC experience on LinkedIn. And in seconds, you get a list of people you can actually reach out to. And it really double checks that they're good matches, not just throws you a bunch of names. Even if you're in marketing, just trying to find the right influencers, this works exactly exactly the same way. Lessie instantly gives you the right profile so you can spend less time searching in the deep depths of the internet. Right now, Lessie is free under a private beta launch, which means you have to apply for access. But if you're in startup sales, recruiting, marketing, or just figuring out your next career move, this is something worth trying out for free. The link is in the description. Skip the guesswork, guys. So how do we actually make these models smaller? You don't just wake up one morning, take a GPT model and hit shrink like it's a zip file. The process is more like carefully trimming the model until it keeps what matters and lets go of the rest. One way to do that is pruning. So imagine you have a tree in your backyard, branches are sticking out everywhere, some healthy, some not. Pruning is about cutting off that dead weight. In an AI model, that means stripping away connections and parameters that don't add much value. What's left is leaner, faster, and still capable of doing the job. Another technique is quantization, which is like compressing a high resolution photo. You shrink it down so the file is smaller, but to your eyes, it still looks sharp. With AI, engineers replace big high precision numbers with smaller ones, so the math runs lighter and quicker without throwing away the whole picture. The third way is model distillation, which I always think of as passing down wisdom. A huge teacher model teaches a smaller student model to mimic its behavior. The student doesn't carry every detail in its head, but it learns the important patterns and shortcuts, and the result is a smaller brain that still thinks a lot like its parent. Put it all together, and you can see how small language models aren't really built from scratch. They're handcrafted by engineers to cut, compress, and distill until they have something small, but just as useful. Now, here are some examples of SLMs being used right now. One thing to keep in mind is that small models are usually part of a larger orchestration, so they don't always replace the big models. Instead, they kind of slot into workflows where their strengths matter most. One of my favorite is Google's Gemma, which is really optimized for running on your device. It's strong with multimodal tasks and is a star in applications where privacy and efficiency matter. Mistral 7B is another huge fan favorite because it's open source and powerful enough for real work, but still small enough to run on a decent laptop. Then there's GPT-40 Mini, which you can think of as a local version of GPT. It gives you much of the same capability, but in a lighter, cheaper, and faster package. And IBM's Granite is also worth mentioning especially for businesses that are building agentic workflows and need reliability with low latency, this is the little guy you should be using. Now, which of these models would you actually want running on your local device? Gemma, Mistral, GPT-40 Mini, or something else? Mistral is my personal favorite. Now, what all of these examples have in common is that they're rarely used on their own. Small models almost always live inside a larger system, and that's usually what people mean when they talk about AI agents or agentic workflows. A net network of a bunch of systems that can all work together to actually get stuff done. This is where the difference between large and small models really start to show up. An LLM is a generalist. It likely won't be the best at anything, but an SLM is built to specialize. It's the smaller brain inside the system that stays laser focused on one task, which makes the output sharper and more reliable. But because of this, it's also why orchestration matters. Instead of relying on one big model to do everything poorly, you build a network of smaller ones, each train for a specific role, your accountant agent, your legal agent, your marketing agent. And that's the structure that actually makes AI agents achievable and not just a toy pipe dream. Because what's the point of AI if they're not really going to actually be reliable or move past that point? Now, that doesn't mean that large models are going away. There are plenty of situations where you still need that jumbo jet for the brain. If you want a model to write a novel, brainstorm across many different domains, or answer open-ended questions that pull from a really wide knowledge base, like basically Google or an encyclopedia, the small models just don't have that range. But the real future isn't choosing one or the other, it's combining them. 
SLMs are the missing piece that makes AI practical in the real world. They're specialized, private, affordable, and when you weave them into larger systems, they make AI agents possible. Large models will always have their place, but right now, most people are climbing into jumbo jets for queries that could just as easily be handled by a drone. The future is knowing when to use the jet and when to send the drone. So the giants may make the headlines, but the smaller models are the ones that will actually impact your life. Now, do you think SLMs will really take over or will we always default back to the bigger models because they feel smarter? What made sense to you or didn't make sense to you? Let me know in the comments. And I also just wanted to share a suggestion from one of you guys, his name is Brad. He has been super active in my channel from kind of the beginning. He gave me a really good idea that I should create a form where you guys tell me exactly what you want to learn. So my content is actually coming from you guys, not just from my brain up here. So I'm going to put a form in the description Description, please dump whatever questions you have about AI, what you want me to cover. It will definitely influence me and what I will choose to spend my time on. And I guess we're making this a tradition now that I'm going to dance after every episode. What do we do? The chicken dance? I'm so awkward. I need to come up with something. Guys, tell me what dance move do I do? I can do scuba. I can do peekaboo. Oh man, I need help I think.